Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up? This is Jeff from BKJ Mag TV, and this is the BKJ Mag Podcast Experience coming to you live from Brooklyn, New York. <clears throat> so tonight, we're going to take an examination of the WNBA's mistreatment of Caitlin Clark. Now, Caitlin Clark, when she got drafted into the WNBA, they looked at her as the second coming of Larry Bird. I talked about it on my on my previous episodes on my podcast. Her and Angel Reese were the second coming of Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. Now, I noticed some things irregular. Like I noticed some irregularities. Um. So my first thing, and I'm gonna put it out there, is Angel Reese is not getting the attention that she deserves from the WNBA. I don't understand. Like this is the moment that they've been waiting for. This is the moment the WNBA's been waiting for. And why they're not putting Angel Reese on top of the marquee matches? Like why they're not pushing her hard? Like why are they not capitalizing on this opportunity? And Caitlin Clark, they're over pushing her. But what the way they're over pushing her is they're making her team. I'm, I'm going to tell you straight up the Indiana Fever suck. They suck. I'm just going to say it straight up that team sucks. When the coach needs to be dismissed, the general manager needs to be dismissed. Um, it's just it's a, just a terrible team, to be honest, which was just a terrible team. And Aaliyah and Caitlin Clark are on that team, got drafted onto that team. You're a part of each other. And they're trying to turn this team around, but it's hard to turn it around when you put them against marquee teams in the beginning of the season. Right now, the Indiana Fever is led by Caitlin Clark and Aaliyah are one and six. One and six. That's terrible for the WNBA. Terrible. And it's like you're trying to promote the WNBA. You're trying to get people to watch the WNBA. And you're putting Caitlin Clark in, in, in at a disadvantage by making her compete against the best teams in the beginning of the season. Now, remember, they only play 40 games. And they're one and six. That's seven games. That's crazy. Seven games. And they play 40. They play 40 games. 20 home games and 20 road games. This is not the NBA. So it's like the season's basically somewhat done already with the first seven games. I mean, it's just crazy right now. It's just like. You know, you're really putting Caitlin Clark at a disadvantage. You know, you're supposed to promote. She's supposed to get the eyes onto the league. Angel Reese is doing very well with the Chicago Skies. You know, but it's not being talked about as much as Caitlin Clark's disaster with the Indiana Fevers. And honestly, that's supposed to be the marquee match. I mean, you kind of see. It's like... Um, how can I say this? The WNBA is really getting exposed. I thought they were getting exposed last year. This year, they're getting really exposed. And what I think what really hurts the WNBA is when the players are coming at Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark has already amassed over $30 million in endorsement money. Over $30 million. And she only makes a paltry $76,000 as her starting salary in the WNBA. Now, I'll tell you this. the It's not easy for the other women in the league. Like, they're getting that time. They're getting that exposure when they go against Caitlin Clark. But it's like, y'all got the league, the WNBA league, gotta do better. It gotta do better. Because the women need to get paid. And the women, there are women in the WNBA that's basically attacking Caitlin Clark. They're setting dirty screens. They're knocking her down on the floor. They're pushing her. It's like, come on. 
that's that's the breadwinner. That's the one that's gonna bring the attention to the league. Right? Recently, they got charter flights. They got private flights. No longer have to do commercial. You know, for the next two years, and it's gonna be in the collective bargaining agreement next year. I promise you that. But I'm telling you this. It's just like, you know, this this the Caitlin Clark effect. The moment that she was in Dallas weighing a flying commercial and she had to wait with all the other passengers to get her her luggage it was just like okay we're gonna do something the league is gonna do something about it so because of the caitlin clark effect everybody's flying private now it's crazy everybody's flying charter so i things are changing for the wnba there's money being there i was looking at a los angeles sparks game and i saw how packed the arena was it was just super packed 18,000 plus that's for less that's, that's basically a Los Angeles LA Clippers game and that's for women basketball so it's 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 people want to see Caitlin Clark play so it's like you know it's like it's, uh, cut her some slack I mean people say it's a race thing to me it is a race thing between black and white it will always be a race thing no matter what job what field it will always be a race thing but the women in the league gotta cut caitlin clark some slack she didn't walk in to this asking for all this attention she shoots the three ball very well and she has been able to get into a rhythm because the players have been too aggressive on her instead of being aggressive on her y'all should be helping her promote the league she'll get y'all brands get y'all deals off the exposure get the money get the bag chase the bag get the bread get you know see the the lack of roster spots the lack of pay the lack of this expose the WNBA don't attack Caitlin Clark work with Caitlin Clark to expose the nasty the horrible inequalities that's that's embodied inside the WNBA it's disrespectful how the WNBA is being conducted as a league right now and I think Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese need to come together and with the other players to really really push the WNBA narrative all the way into a better lane into a stronger lane into a more lucrative lane so all the women can get paid 10 figures you know what i'm saying nine figures 10 figures and stuff like that that's the goal at the end of the day that is the goal that's the motivation that's that's what takes it all the way that's what when you wear that you want a woman wears that uniform to go out and compete in a court that's what they're competing for they they competed for that respect and notoriety and the bet and the bread that comes with it the massive amount of bread i'm getting tired I've seen all these sponsorships on jerseys on the WNBA jersey. I think it's ugly. To be honest, no disrespect. The WNBA jersey is so ugly. It's ridiculously ugly because it has all those advertisements on it. I'm sorry. I'm not buying a jersey with all that advertisement by Boost Mobile. I'm sorry. That's just the way I feel on the on the topic. It's crazy. So the WNBA needs to get better. They, the women in the league needs to cut Cat Caitlin needs to cut Caitlin Clark some slack and basically help her make the league a better, more lucrative place so everybody in the league can get paid and be treated very well, just like the men in the NBA. The goal is to get eighteen thousand people every night. That's what they need to do. Don't bet again. Don't bet against it by hurting Caitlin Clark work in order to achieve those goals every day so the bread could be made and those nine ten figure salaries could come together because you know y'all want some bread too anyway thank you for listening to this b episode of the bkj man podcast experience peace love always rule one